Hello again! So far in our exploration of blended learning, we have defined what blended learning is. The combination of face-to-face -face classroom instruction with online learning for the same students in the same course at the same time. And we've considered some of the theories and models you can use to ground key decisions for your own implementation. In this chapter, we begin to look at the planning process itself and the design factors that create successful blended learning. When we, for the very first time, decide we want to offer blended learning opportunities in our course or program, it's very easy to become overwhelmed by the range of technologies, the changes in how we're expected to teach, the new forms of activities we can try, or even how we schedule those activities to find a ba balance between in-person and online time. We will look at all of these in the chapters still to come. Yet within all of this restructuring and re-imaging, the most important principle of effective learning today remains the same, and in fact is enhanced as we move to blended forms of learning. As you read through this chapter, Keep this principle always in mind. The key to effective blended learning is a personalized, accessible, learner-centered approach. What does a learner-centered approach mean when it comes to planning your blended learning course? This chapter for, provides answers to that question, beginning with a four-step planning process that takes the focus off the technology and puts it back onto the learner. As you will see, the first step in this process is to focus on your pedagogical goals and to ask what blended learning offers you, your teachers, and above all, your learners, based on the type of course, its subject, and the background of your students. The next three steps build on this by looking at the technology, the curriculum, and the syllabus. By asking how your learners will benefit from a blended format and what they may need in terms of learner support, you will be well on your way to designing the most effective mix of both in-person and online activities. And that's the next topic of this chapter. Designing learning activities begins with defining a set of learning outcomes. And again, you'll see that integrating online and in-person activities plays into this from the very start. The idea is not simply to add new technology-based activities on top of an already existing course. That can end up creating a course and a half, a greater workload for everyone, with little connection between the two forms of activity. Then there will be no real educational benefit for your learners. Instead, this chapter takes a closer look at how the two forms of activity can be deliberately and effectively integrated following the community of inquiry framework we discussed earlier. Again, in this chapter, we stay focused on the learning and teaching, and the rest of the chapter is devoted to those two aspects. No matter how fluent our students may be with the technology, networking, or creative applications, we don't believe anyone is truly born an online learner. Learning online, and therefore blended learning, is itself a skill or a set of habits and values that itself has to be learned. There are new types of communications, new roles for the teacher and the student, and the challenges in the blended learning format. What's the most effective balance between teacher and student interaction? How should learners interact with each other to create supporting a supporting learning environment? This chapter gives you some guidelines to follow as you prepare your students for blended learning, built around cognitive, social, and teaching presences of the community of inquiry model. Once again, showing how a framework or theory can have direct application in our planning. Finally, we look at seven principles you can apply to your own practice as a teacher. In blended learning, the teacher's role is different, on the one hand, from the lecturer's role in face-to-face -face classrooms. 
but also different from the facilitator's role in distance education. Instead, in a class or program that tries to integrate both in-person and online learning, it will be useful to see your role as an active and collaborative designer of learning opportunities, directing and supporting your students as they create meaningful connections between their work in each form of learning. Designing learning opportunities means designing for open communication and trust, critical reflection and discourse. It means creating a sense of community and supporting inquiry and collaboration. It also means directing your students' learning to ensure a resolution to this inquiry, one that aligns with a valid assessment of their learning, whether that be self-assessment, peer assessment, or teacher assessment, or a combination of all three. This final section of the chapter expands on each of these principles and helps you adapt to your new role as teacher and designer of blended learning. Once again, even as we introduce new technologies into our course or program, <clears throat> with all the implications that that may have on institutional structure and other technical considerations, the key at this planning stage is the focus or centrality of the learner and the learning experiences. In later chapters, we cover more technical implications and go through some of the technologies involved. But for now, as you read this chapter, keep your eye on the ways these new forms of teaching and learning combine to create effective blended learning. Happy reading!